What up, y'all? Josh and EC here once again with another quality video. And as you can tell from the title, we are doing another therapy Thursday, where we hand you guys out some friendly advice. We read some of you guys' submissions via Instagram DM. On Josh and EC. On Josh and Stop EC. sending it to us individually, Please do not send it to our individuals. <laughs> There's already enough questions for us individually. Yeah. But today we are doing another Therapy Thursday. As always, we give you guys the same disclaimer. We are not licensed therapists. Mm -mm. We are just mm -mm. two lovebirds handing out some friendly advice. Hopefully you can take this advice, apply it to your relationship if you want to. Mm -hmm. Take it with a grain of salt if you don't want mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. But either way, we're just doing this for entertainment purposes. But without being too long-winded, let's go ahead and hop into this video. All right, Therapy Thursday. Hi, first off, love you guys. Your advice is so helpful. Thanks. But anyways, so I've been with my current boyfriend for almost three years and we get along great and he's an amazing guy. Well, that's good. He's a year younger than me and still in college, but I've always been independent. So I have my own place and pay for everything. So he's at my place all the time, basically living here, but can't afford to pay for anything, which I'm fine with because he's in school. But in return, I just ask that he helps me with the cleaning around the apartment. I always have to tell him to clean and it's getting old because I don't want to feel like a mom slash nag so I end up doing more of the cleaning. I've also told him I want him to show me he cares with actions more but it seems I have to remind him of that a lot too. I don't want to nag and I don't want to lose him but I feel like I'm doing a lot for not much in return. What do you guys think? Woo! I'm gonna say it, to me, it sounds like you are doing a lot for nothing. Like, remember that wifely duty thing? Yeah, yeah, 100%. It really sound like you handing out them wifely duties. 100%. And I mean, like, it's, it's her like, house. It's yeah, her home. It's dang near like wifely sugar mama duties. Yeah, it's a combination. It's like a whole combination. And yeah, like, and that's not fair. For you to just ask for cleaning right. and a little more attention. Right. I feel like that. That's bare minimal. That's, That's bare, bare minimal. minimal. Here's my thing. I'm really gonna start being blunt easy, okay? Okay. When you're dealing with a situation like this, as women, we gotta do better with this, this, this. I don't wanna say it's a threatening thing. It is a threat, but you gotta come through with the threat too though, mm. if that makes sense. So it's kind of like if X, Y, Z doesn't change, maybe you don't have to put a time period on it, but you know what I mean? Like in, if a time period can be set in your head, then I Maybe think, this isn't for me. Yeah. I think what she's trying to get out okay. what you, is that you need to put your foot down. 100%. Expeditiously. And 100%. it's not like it's not like put your foot down and say like, hey, you're not doing the same things because apparently you've already said that. Mm -hmm. it's you repeated more, yourself. Yeah, it's more times. so like saying, okay, we've had this conversation. Right. I'm not asking you for anything mm -hmm. that's above and beyond mm -hmm. or something that's like outside of your power. Yeah. I'm asking you to clean up. Okay. Hello, oh, Lauren. All you're asking is for the cleanup and show you a little more affection. Those things are free. Yes. Okay, both of those are free actions. If he can't come through on that end, seems more like anchor activity than engine activity. 100%, and this is why I'm saying you gotta, like you said, put the foot down. I said threat. Choose it however you want, but yeah. something needs to get done. And I mean, you said he's an amazing guy and all that, so he should be pretty understanding if you come to him and be like, hey, look, you have a head up on your end of the bargain. I said you can stay here. Right. I said you can kick with me. I don't ask you to pay for nothing, but right. you're not coming through on the cleaning tip. Right. And you could be very transparent and say, look, if I keep coming to you, you're going to eventually think I'm nagging you. Mm -hmm. I don't want to nag yeah, you. Can I be just honest. want it yep. to be clean. Mm -hmm. If you have a stern solo conversation, you won't have to continually nag because you're not giving like that. This is the threat energy yeah. that I need. The conversation that we had years ago was very calm. It was calm, but, but it was, it was kind of like a I knew to take you serious. Mm -hmm. And that's what the real effective point of the conversation mm -hmm. I'm trying to get across is to be stern in it. Mm -hmm. So like if you give somebody an emotional two-way go where it's like, hey, could you like, you know, right. help out a little more cleaning? It's sort of a two-way go. Mm -hmm. Whereas yeah. like if you have a stern conversation and be like, hey, look, I pay for everything. I don't ask for anything. <laughs> All I ask is for you to do dishes. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the third time I've said this. Mm -hmm. I don't want to keep saying this. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there will be a bigger problem down the road. Mm -hmm. So can you please... Just stay on top of clean. Mm -hmm. That sounds more like a firm conversation mm -hmm. than a two-way go of like, hey, you think you can help out a little bit more? Because if you say like, do you think you can? Mm -hmm. That's like, a, oh, I think I can, but that doesn't mean I will. So firm instead of threat. Although threat is still a threat. It's technically a threat, but, but don't firm. stage it as yes. a threat. Yes. Yes. Then it turns into a big problem. Facts. Facts. So 
Just be stern. Yes. Stern and firm. Okay, Therapy Thursday. First off, I love y'all's videos and personalities. Y'all have such a nice, inviting vibe. It's really comforting. Mm, thank you. Oh, uh, she said, but I'm 16, talking to this dude my age for a good five months in my head. Everything's cool. Then he just breaks it off out of nowhere, saying he's talking to some girl. I don't trip, literally say, okay, and leave it be. About three, four weeks later, he texts me saying he just check in on, wait, hey, just check in on you, and proceeds to tell me that he only broke things off because he thought I didn't mess with him anymore, and I didn't want to hear, <laughs> I'm sorry, okay, and I didn't want to hear, wait, and didn't want to hear me say I didn't like him, though I did, SMH. He tells me he still has feelings for me and wants to try again. We've been keeping in contact. We go to school together and have classes together, so it's kind of hard not to. And it seems like he really changed and is truly wanting to try again. I still have feelings for him. I just don't know if I should try again. I know y'all are going to say, you're so young, dot, dot, dot. I know, I know, but I'm looking for a real answer, please, and thank you. Let me give you a real answer. Mm. Brothers playing hella games. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use the phrase that you told me not to use, but you're young and he's young. Mm -hmm. And he's very young and he's playing young man games. Mm -hmm. The fact that he left you mm -hmm. out of the blue. For another girl. For another girl. Because that wasn't out of the blue. You don't yeah, just, something that, was marinating no, before that, he decided to really do that. That junk don't just happen overnight. Yeah. Okay. You don't just catch feelings like that overnight. No. Something was definitely Mar concocted yeah. while you two were talking. Mm -hmm. So disrespect happened. Mm -hmm. Noted. He comes back four weeks later. More something than, went wrong. Something went wrong girl. with the other girl. Yeah. 100%. So more than likely, he's like, I regret. Mm -hmm. And now he looks back and he mm -hmm. saw that the graph that was, was a greater. Good thing. Yeah, he had a good thing. He had with a good you. thing. Mm -hmm. And now he's circling back mm -hmm. to see if he still has a chance. Mm. Don't give him another chance. Dog, mm. no. he played you. Fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame on you. And don't let it be a third time. That's true. Because then we're talking about tires. That's true. She's 16, babe. He probably just got a call. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next up, Therapy Thursday. Hey, guys. How are you doing today? We're doing. We're doing. Nice. Yeah, we're doing. We're doing. But thank you for asking. Appreciate honestly. that. <laughs> Quick background context. I was in a relationship for three and a half years with a good guy who had some mental health issues quote unquote depression that really started to hinder us and made the relationship hard. I felt guilty for having a, to sort of carry the burden of being with someone with depression and feeling unhappy but didn't want to give up on him because of the times he treated me well. Fast forward to last year, May, we broke up. I spent a good portion of last year attempting to reach out and make amends, but he claimed he was happier single. This year came and I became really close friends with a guy in my nursing class. And we have a lot in common. We aren't dating yet because I asked him, I asked for him to wait till we graduate, which is next month, but he treats me like I'm his girlfriend already. My ex is now hanging around my closest friend's husband and bonding with them. Oh, her closest friend's husband. Mm -hmm. So he's like in a, a group with her mm -hmm. friend's husband. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now they are saying things like I should get back with my ex because he is changing, but they don't know the full context of my relationship with him and I'm not convinced. They are trying to be respectful and let me make my decision, but then turn around and invite him to things and bring him, bring him up knowing I like someone else, which has made me not want to share details about the new guy. How should I address this boundary issue with my friends mm. without making them feel like they are wrong for caring about my life? Mm. Um. You can say like, hey guys, respectfully. I, I, I've moved on. I've moved on. And I would like like all of us to move, to move on. on. Like I'm happy for my ex if he's happier with what he's doing in his life. But like just yeah. let them know you're in a different phase in your life right now. Enjoying yourself, meeting new people. Like y'all are happier apart. Like, yeah. I feel like a lot of people, and I can admit to being on the other side of like when friends break up, just like. Yeah, it, you're pushing for you it. Know, it makes it like it makes life easier if things work everybody's, out. Where, like, yeah. Everybody's got like right. a person. We can go on group dates. But you, you know? have to always respect. Yeah. The people, the actual party who was involved with the breakup and stuff. Yeah. Their because at stuff. the end of the day, it's not their life to live. You would have to be in that relationship with the person. Right. So, like, you can't tell me, oh, it would look good because it just looks good from the outside. Right. Like, it does, like you it never know what's happening behind inside. those doors. So I think what she's saying right now is pretty like fair. They're like yeah. your real friends. You being able to just be like, like you said, respectfully, 
I would like to move that. on from this. I'm good off of that relationship. I, you know, like yeah. I don't want to keep talking about it. I think that that should Can be enough. we just enough. Dead it? Mm-hmm. I mean, because I, you tried to reach out in the summer and you said he said he was good single. Mm-hmm. Now this right. time is for you. She I'm, said they don't know all the context. Oh well, mm-hmm. maybe you might have to shed some light on the fact that right. he said he was good single. Right. So. But then they might be like, well, girl, no, he be telling us. Yeah, he be talking about you. <laughs> you know what like, I mean? They're going to try and reset the mm-hmm, situation. Mm-hmm. So, again, like we said in, I think, the two, beginning. Yeah. <laughs> firm, yes. stern, to the point. You got to yes. hit them right between the eyes of yes. what you want to do. Hey, look, respectfully, this ain't it. Yeah. So, please, stop bringing Let's that up. Let's move on. I'm trying to move on. Mm-hmm. It makes it very difficult to move on when you guys keep bringing it up. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm halfway out the woods. Mm-hmm. Let me get all the way out the woods. Yes. Don't keep bringing me back. Therapy Thursday. My boyfriend and I have been together for three years now, and recently there's been a string of infidelity on his end. Despite knowing I should have left, I stayed. He promised to show me different and that I wouldn't have to worry about anything. Oh, wait. Wouldn't have to worry about that anymore. But then gets caught DMing heart eyes to another female within the next couple days. He gets upset with me when I confront him saying I'm stressing him out, that I don't do anything but add more stress and drama to him because he's had family problems and he just started going through a Greek process. Grief process. Oh, sure. Okay, <laughs> so I'm like, okay, but he still finds time to converse, flirt, and message girls inappropriately. And that, and that if I don't leave it alone, he'll be done with me. He says I'm not caring about what he has going on and his feelings and that I'm not listening to him. I feel as though he's not looking at the entire situation. He doesn't realize my actions are consequences of his own and he's stressing himself out by the things he's doing and chooses to lash out on me. I don't want to go into year four with this. I've tried talking it out, trying to get us to connect more even though he says there's nothing I'm doing wrong for him to cheat. I don't know what to do anymore. I can tell you right now. This man. I can tell you. Heavy heavy gaslighting. Heavy gaslight and you need to heavily leave. I'm sorry that you've wasted three years. Honestly. I'm very sorry about that. Mm. But I'm going to go ahead and pull that band-aid off for you right Mm -hmm. now. He tried to flip the script on you and blame you for cheating on you. Right. This is what I mean about the gaslight stuff. And that's one thing that I cannot accept for us women. That's (laughs) That's one thing that just, just gets to me deep. Man, that's Do not crazy. allow a man to ever gaslight you for the bullshit he puts you through. That is that that's just unacceptable. That's that's it's honestly crazy. And I don't <laughs> like stress does not equal I've stressed in this I've been stressed in this relationship. Right. I'm not running to the sitting first hard eyes sitting and, hard eyes to some other person. Like that's not that's not how not love even, works. Yeah, it doesn't even make any sense. And think about like, okay, you're three years in, what does the rest of your life look like if he keeps gaslighting you and then like running off and cheating at the first sign of stress? Is this the best love oh, can get there for you? There it is. That's the one. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> is this the say? best love can get for you? And I can I can hard tell you no. Yeah, Josh and you see our team no on that. Team no, you need to get out there expedite like don't go into year four. Like Please, Mm -hmm. I hope you watch this video, Mm -hmm. and I hope you break up with him, like, same day kind Mm -hmm. of thing. This is terrible. Mm -hmm. You should never accept being cheated on and then being blamed Mm -hmm. for being cheated on. Mm -hmm. Because you're confronting the cheating. You just said there was a string of infidelity. Right. A string of it. And dare I say, too, when you hopefully do end up breaking up with this guy, take a while to yourself to start working on that Mm self-love, that self-perseverance, like... Because I feel like a lot of times when us women stay in relationships like that, where guys just are treating us like trash, cheating on us, all that stuff, there's some low self-esteem there. And I'm not saying that to like come for you because I've been there before. I think a lot of us females have. Um, but you got to do some soul searching and hopefully at the end of that journey, was well, never an end of journey of self-love, but you know what I mean? Like as you progress in that journey, you'll realize what you do and don't deserve. And this is something that absolutely nobody deserves. One hundred percent deserves better than whatever dude is bringing to the yeah, table. That's so. not it. All right, next up, Therapy Thursday. So my boyfriend and I have been together for over two years, and things started off great until the second year mark. Last July, he moved an hour away for college. I already finished undergrad, but he's still trying to get his degree. Eventually, distance got to us and became too much, so we broke up. Uh, but still talk to each other and visit. He's going through some emotional stuff and trying to find self-love for himself. The love we have for each other is still there and everything is great, but when we're oh, everything's great when we are together in person, but when we are apart, 
There are dry spells and times where I question if we should even be together. I don't know if I should wait for him to get himself right so we can officially be together again, or should I just move on? Okay, so that just, because I almost had a question when she was saying she didn't know if they should stay together or whatever, because I, I was like, I thought the last thing she had said was that they broke up. But things get complicated and messy when you break up, but y'all are still talking every day and visiting each other. Because yeah. there's no boundary there. There's no... Yep, the lines officially got blurred. Blurry as hell. Yeah. And therefore, your feelings are still hella in jeopardy and on the line because now you don't have the title anymore, so you really can't say anything if he wants to move a certain way, but you're still committing to him in the way that you were when y'all were officially together with a title. To me, That's that sounds like a high-risk investment. Yeah. <laughs> sounds like a very high risk. And like yeah. in relationships, you kind of want to do very low-risk. Yeah, investment. 100%. I like that, actually. <laughs> Aim for low-risk low investments when it comes to relationships. It should not feel like it's real risky. I don't know mm -hmm. if like he could be the one or he could be like a sociopath or the guy. Right. Like you want to make sure it's like somewhere even killed. My thing is, if he's on the self-love journey, to me, if you're going to break up, if you're gonna go then take life. this journey yeah. individually like it shouldn't still be this talking every day and like visiting each other and hanging out and kicking it mm -hmm. because if he needed to break up in order to find himself and be on his journey y'all aren't really doing anything different basically nope. is what i'm trying to besides say besides taking the title off. taking the title off and that is dangerous territory to be in and as josh yeah. said a very high risk That's investment because you're in hopes risk. that Maybe yeah. when he finds himself or whatever, y'all will get back together. But it's high risk because you don't know. And you should just, honestly, while he's finding himself, you should be finding yourself. And honestly, you can start learning a lot about what other people may or may not be doing in that whole finding yourself journey. Because if you start finding yourself and you start realizing like, hey, you know, I'm meeting new people. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling some type of way. Mm -hmm. He's probably finding himself the exact same way. Mm -hmm. And you don't even know. I don't know. When people say like stuff like, I'm just trying to find myself mm -hmm. and do my own thing. It makes me just say like, you like the thought of me. I'm like. Good potential I'm or great potential when you're ready, when you're ready mm -hmm. not to like, mm -hmm. when you're ready to settle down. Right person, wrong timing type of energy. Kind of thing. And I think that it's okay if maybe you guys come back together down the line. And y'all have discovered yeah. yourselves and stuff like that. And ending it on a cordial note. But I think you need to start setting some like boundaries yeah you guys shouldn't be talking every night and y'all you should really shouldn't be visiting you, you really should be shouldn't. looking out for yourself yeah until he comes back on some serious like mm -hmm. ready to commit stuff you mm -hmm. should be looking out for your own self-interest right mm -hmm. now because obviously he's looking out for his self-love journey and you kind of need to be looking out for your self-love journey i feel like when you break up with someone you're no they no longer ha should have access to you the way they did when you were their girlfriend or mm -hmm. boyfriend yeah so change the accessibility create that boundary it can still be cordial though. It don't have to be this whole like dramatic ending and stuff. I think it's just like, you know, I want to respect the self love journey that you told me you wanted to be on. And I also want to like protect myself and like be on my own. You can word it in some way like that, but <laughs> somewhere along those lines. All right, Therapy Thursday, please, exclamation point. Hey guys, so I'm a junior in college and have been pretty locked into my friend group of four throughout my college experience. During my freshman year, I lacked boundaries, allowed a lot of disrespect disguised as jokes, and didn't voice the ways I felt unsatisfied in our friendships at times. I still loved and cared for them, but I was choosing people out of fear of being alone. Then COVID and quarantine happened, and I used that time to heal, set intentions for the way I wanted the rest of my college experience to go, establish behaviors I will not tolerate from people around me, etc. Good for you. What? Essentially, I began the process of elevating emotionally, physically, mentally, financially, spiritually. Look at her. When we returned to campus, I lived with two, two of the three, okay, of my friends in that group. One of them, name is just in, struggled to respect my new boundaries. I honestly started to feel like a bugaboo constantly telling her that I felt disrespected when she would joke about my shortcomings. She would always be down to listen, but she struggled with actually changing her actions. Our other friend in the group who we didn't have, who we didn't live with, titled J, took my much needed isolation during quarantine very personal. As much as I tried to explain that I needed that time alone to focus and repair my mental health, she felt like I simply didn't want to communicate with her slash disliked her. When we returned to campus, she was respectful of my new boundaries, but she exploited the fact that I was the most sensitive in the group during disagreements within the group. Example, imposing guilt on only me that the three of us living together 
we're getting closer without her. Fast forward to this semester, N and J are doing a semester long program in DC. Me and E, the fourth group member, decide to go visit them for a week before my 21st birthday. Before they even left for DC, they told me multiple times we are going to come back to campus for your birthday. Cool, so I knew they were gonna ask me my B-Day plans during the visit, so I made a one day itinerary to share with them. Before we even got there, I had a horrible gut feeling about this visit, and it proved to be true because when we, because when they finally asked, what do you want to do for your birthday, and I told them, their first response was, ugh, I have a lot of shit to do, basically, and can you move it in terms of her birthday plans. I made it clear that that particular day was the only day I could dedicate to my birthday celebration, and they asked me over and over again, can you move it? Their alternative plans for the day, <laughs> question mark, a college party and a boyfriend visit. Mind you, the boyfriend lives on my campus. They eventually unenthusiastically agreed to come down for my birthday weekend, but I felt so sick to my stomach about their reaction. I told them to hold off on buying their ticket because I'm reconsidering how um, slash who I want to invite to my B-Day. I expressed how my feeling, how it hurt my feelings that it was such a hard decision for them to sacri sacrifice a regular college party for my birthday. They invalidated that expression, so I, un so I uninvited them. Still had a great uh, birthday, by the way. That's good. After that, a little bit of time allowed me to get over it, but there was no reconciliation between us. I didn't feel like it was my job to initiate that. After about a month of not speaking, they proposed a group Halloween costume and I was like, she put question marks. So I used that as an opportunity to say, hey, I'm not actively mad about the B-Day situation anymore, but there hasn't been any reconciliation, so I'm good. I will be discussing this. I will not be discussing this via text. Immediately, they demanded a FaceTime conversation saying, we're either talk about this now or we never. I already felt that they didn't see my time slash schedule as important as theirs by asking me to move my literal birthday and now this. But I chose to speak to them anyways, and I went into calm, and I went into calm and looking, oh, I went to the conversation, calm and looking for resolution, not to argue why I'm right. N and I had a productive conversation and she matched my resolution oriented energy. But her main claim was that it wasn't her intention to make me feel X, Y, and Z. My response, be more intentional. Jay picked up the phone with an attitude, cut me off every sentence, blaming me for the poor planning of my birthday, making the whole thing tit for tat. So I just let her argue with herself because she clearly cared about being more, being right more than hearing me out. Despite her speaking to me in a condescending tone, I heard her sigh and I listened for ways I can contribute ways I contributed to the misunderstanding. Apparently they are apparently they were unaware that I was still unresolved when they proposed Halloween. So I chose to apologize via text after both of the conversations. I didn't apologize for the way I felt or the way I was responding to feeling disrespected or and invalidated, but I apologized for not being even more clear than I was about how I was upset. Of course, they accepted my apology quickly, but the closest thing I got to an apology was, I guess I'm sorry if dot dot dot. They said they, said they wanted to move forward and not have this affect our relationship. When they visited on Halloween, E and I invited them into our apartment. They both barely spoke to me and avoided me most of the night. Jay even made, a subtle, made subtle digs at me. I just don't know how to salvage what's left of our friendship or exit this friendship peacefully. Both of them still being close to E and prompting her to pick a side makes the situation more complex. Mm. N, J, and E. Mm -hmm. Okay, so E is the friend that's around. N is the- E is the one I think she lives with on campus. She the other two, I believe, are in DC. Okay. Mm -hmm. So she's saying it makes it complex that she lives with E, but E is still friends with those two. Respectfully keep your distance from N and J. Mm -hmm. N and J don't sound like well, N might. Who was the one that made a dig? J. J. Y'all made subtle digs. J sound, J sound a little iffy. Mm. It's, it doesn't sound extremely toxic, but it sounds like the making of a very toxic relationship. Sounds like it's brewing. J's already there. I was gonna say, it sounds extremely toxic. J is there. Nice. N I, seems like she's teeter-tottering, but it seems like she might be following the influence of J. Mm. This is tough too, because they've all been a group of friends since, yeah. for like the last three, four years. I think that before I just hop into like, girl, get out. 
I think that it's worth having maybe one more conversation. Sometimes I feel like when you try to have a difficult conversation with a group, it leaves a target almost. Mm -hmm. And like everybody can get defensive and like gang up. Whereas if you're individually having, so maybe if E is your roommate, like start the conversation with E. Like where you're at, how you're feeling about the friendship dynamics and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But don't like talk no shit about nobody. Just say like, this is where I'm at. And maybe even like be more specific. Like what was it that you would like to change about you and E's relationship? Then talk to N. What is it that you would like to change about you and her relationship? And then I don't quite know if Jay is worth it, but because she's a part of the friend group. I'm going to be completely honest and say Jay don't sound worth it. Jay don't sound worth it, but I think in order, if she wants to keep the other friends, to keep that peace and like cordialness, yeah. she is going to have to talk to Jay. She it can't talk to the other It sounds two like not. Jay is like the... Uh, Antagonist? Say, yes. It, it wouldn't say like, I wouldn't say leader, but it seems like she has the most emotional dominance over the situation. Mm. It sounds like Jay She's is, the most problematic one to me. Jay sounds like an emotional bully, to be honest. Mm. She sounds like a very emotional yeah. boy. And you always have to be very mindful of those friends that throw little uh, the digs in the shade. And But it's such a joke. Don't take me too seriously, sis. You're being too sensitive. Yeah. You got to watch out for those type of people. And the fact life. that like she wasn't very open to hearing what you had to say. She more so talked over you when you guys had that conversation. Was that her as well? Yeah. She talked over her. and then, Oh, yeah. Jay is not it. Jay don't sound like it's it. But. She picked up the phone with attitude. Yep. There's ways to operate within a friend group and not really be cordial with one person for the sake of sanity. You mean be cordial? Yeah, be cordial. Uh-huh. Just cordial. Though. Yeah, it's just cordial. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it's like, look, I respected uh, the fact that we're all friends. I may not necessarily care for you, mm -hmm. but I care for everybody else. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe you do still care for Jay. Maybe there is a part of you that still cares for Jay and you guys can work something out. Again, a difficult conversation is going to have to be had and you got to hit her between the eyes. She's not the type to like hear anything other than you hitting her between the eyes just based off of what you said in that story. Mm -hmm. It sounds like she's gonna try and talk over mm -hmm. or downplay her faults. Mm -hmm. And if I'm being more blunt, EC, then kind of like- I personally don't easy. have time for that. Yeah, because I'm thinking about where I'm at in life right now. Yeah, and sometimes it's different for them. No, exactly, because she's still in college. She got another yeah. year left and stuff. So like, but I think, I kind of treat friendships similar to how I view relationships just in the sense of like, do I think that I can get better or is this friendship as good as it can get for me? Mm -hmm. Like is someone not validating my feelings or someone making digs at me and jokes and like kikiing about my shortcomings, like all of that stuff. To me, that doesn't scream true friendship. Mm -hmm. And that's just the honest truth. That's not to say you've never had like solid moments with these people, but I don't know. I just don't feel like friendships should be that complicated yeah she and that like catty or y'all haven't seen each other in a whole semester because they're they're in dc but they come and visit and they give you anti-energy that that's not a friend mm -hmm. and I, it's not like it sounds like from the beginning of the story you, you chose these friends out of fear of being alone mm -hmm. and now it seems like you've come into this uh new self where it's like okay i'm okay mm -hmm. with being alone i found myself in my time right and good for you by the way i forgot to touch on yeah. that yeah good shot for that you, you definitely found yourself over quarantine mm -hmm. i hope a lot of people did mm -hmm. because, just self-reflection yeah just self-reflection and mm -hmm. kind of growing out of that but uh yeah it seems like you found your new self and your new self is not really liking the way you're being treated mm -hmm. by these people you've so, elevated to yeah be you kind of elevated past it so yeah. in that being the next step is now you know putting your foot down and Standing true on your newfound values. Yeah. So like, if Jay is disrespecting you, I ain't finna tolerate that no more. Yeah. Yeah. I'm basically. not finna tolerate. It. Basically. That's basically the kind of energy. Like, look, I hear you, but like that, I don't really it's rock. It's not gonna work. It's not gonna fly with me no more. Mm -hmm. We're not finna do this back and forth, Kiki, whatever. Mm -hmm. And you still disrespecting me on the low. We've had this conversation, and I ain't finna have this conversation. Mm -hmm. no more. And I feel like too. Obviously, we don't know you like intimately and personally, but just based off even the DM and stuff and how she was articulating herself, she seems like a really like good-hearted person. Yeah. And it's important to protect yourself when you're a good-hearted person from people, people take people advantage. Like, exactly. Take it from someone with the biggest yeah. heart. People take advantage of that junk every single time if they can. Yeah. You have to like, I don't know, there's a way to be friendly and firm at the same mm -hmm. time. You gotta find that balance. Find the balances. It takes time. I've, been, I've just now gotten to my swing of things. Mm -hmm. But yeah, people will take advantage of your kindness and they'll mistake it for weakness. Mm -hmm. So just be careful. Jay sounds like a little trigger. Mm -hmm. I stay away from that, And Jay. don't be afraid to 
possibly oh, like spread your wings a little bit more on your campus. Like somebody that might be in one of your um, courses or like classes or whatever yeah. might be a better fit for you friend wise than the friends that you started with. So, mm-hmm. you know, I that's kind of want, just a yeah. part of life to be honest. It is a part of life. I just, I, I worry about friend drama and I'm sure she's worried about it too because she still lives with one of the friend groups yeah. be around. But I'm saying her spreading her wings, she's still got the right as an individual yeah. to get to know other people. Yeah, for so, sure. So like it can just be like kind of this gradual distance that starts happening yeah. as she starts finding better relationships and bonds yeah. that benefit her. And that Jay don't sound like an engine at oh, all. No, so she, no. But that's up to you to decide from here. That is all we have for this video. Really hope you guys enjoyed this. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have more content on the way, so those post notifications need to be turned all the way up. Who knows? We might post something tomorrow. Mm. No, no. <laughs> oh, I also <laughs> want to say before we end this video, happy one year anniversary, baby. Oh, snap. <laughs> Today makes exactly a year since Josh quit his job. Yeah. Yep. That's crazy. Mm hmm. That's a full circle moment. Mm-hmm. It's actually quite enlightening. Mm-hmm. And thank you guys for supporting us yeah. and helping us get to this point. <laughs> but without being more long-winded mm-hmm. than what we already are, mm-hmm. if you don't already know, I'm Hydra the Hero. She is EC Man Man Deco. Together we are Josh and EC. Now you can follow one of us. You can follow two of us. <laughs> are we oh, doing yeah. this now? Oh, yeah. oh my god. You can follow all three of us. You might as well follow all three of us because we are happy, healthy, and hydrated on all three. But other than that, y'all, until we meet again, peace, love, and grease. And we out. Hey, 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 subscribe. Hey, 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 new video. <laughs>